Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna cut some flowers and herbs in order to dry them. For the flowers, I know I'm definitely going to cut some gomfrina. I'm gonna go through probably all of the herbs that I have and trim them a little bit. And then I might also take you downstairs and cut up some hydrangeas to dry. So I really love drying flowers. I'm gonna plan to use them a lot in some projects for the fall and winter once kind of the garden shut down for the season. But let me take you around and show you exactly what I'm gonna harvest. So this is the bed with the gumfrina in it. Um, this bed took a while to start to bloom, but now it's kind of like the showstopper, I feel like, in the garden. Whereas everything else was really blossoming and having the growth spurts earlier in the season, the gumfrina and the asters just bloom a little bit later, but I've really been loving them now. Uh, the gumfrina I also really like because they are great to dry, whereas most flowers, when you dry them, they'll lose their color, they'll lose their shape. These pretty much stay almost identical looking when they're dry to how they look when they're fresh. Now, ideally, I would be cutting these earlier in the morning or later in the evening when the heat's not as intense and the pollinators have gone away, but my schedule doesn't always work with the ideal garden schedule, so I'm going to cut them and I think it's about noon right now. Um, but what I'm going to do is come in and look at the ones that are more mature, so the ones that have the flower heads that are a bit larger. I'm going to follow the stem down to where I see another branch that'll eventually have a bloom, and I'm just going to cut a little bit above there. So I'm going to do that. I'll probably get at least a handful, maybe 10 to 20 of the flowers today. So I went ahead and cut 16 of the gumfrina. I'm trying to find the balance between regular harvesting to encourage more blooms, um, but also I don't want to take so much that the bed no longer looks pretty. Um, so I've just been kind of going through doing a few handfuls at a time. What I'm going to do now, oh, before that, I want to quickly mention, in case you're interested, I got these as seeds from Johnny Seeds. I think they're called the QIS Carmine variety of gomfrina, and I already know that I'm planning to grow even more of the varieties that they carry next year because I love them so much. So what I'm going to do to prep these for drying, there's not really a ton, um, but I am going to just double check that there aren't any bugs on them. I'm going to remove the leaves on the stem and the leaves that are closest to the flower. You can leave those on to dry if you want. Um, I did that for a few of them, but I find it's easier if I'm gonna remove the leaves anyway, which is the look I prefer, I find that it's easier to do it now rather when they're dry and brittle. So I'm gonna remove the leaves on these and then I will take them inside. So the majority of the gomfrina that I just harvested only have leaves up here at the top, but a few that have the longer stem, which if I can get a long stem, I really do like that just because it gives me a bit more versatility. Um, but those will have leaves on it down here. So what I do is I just use my nails to kind of chop it off carefully because I found that if I kind of just pull, I can almost get some of the stem. So I kind of dig my nail in there to get the leaf off. You could also, you know, use scissors or something like that, but that's an extra step. Um, up here I might lose some of the petals, but that's okay. You can see there's some down here that have dropped. So just removing the leaves at the top. And there we go. Actually, let's get a little bit more off there. So that's what I'm going to do to all of the gumfrina. Okay, so now I have my leaf-free gumfrina and they've left a beautiful mess behind. Um, I'm gonna take you inside now and show you what I'm gonna do to dry them. Okay, so we're now inside and I figured I would kind of show you my drying setup and what I have going on. I'm pretty sure if you asked any professional if this is how they would do it, they would probably say no, but you know what, it works for me. Um, so first, a few things with the flowers. I do find that hanging them upside down, for gumfrina specifically, but really for any flower that I dry has worked the best. I know that one of the strategies with hydrangeas, which I have some up here and some over here on this rack, 
is to put them in a vase with a little bit of water and then let the water evaporate. But every single time I've tried that, and I've done it with different vessels, different amounts of water, different amounts of flowers in each of the vases, um, they wilt and don't look as good as if I just cut them and hang them upside down. Now, this probably looks a little strange, but basically, I think it was last winter, I saw a photo online of a florist that had dried flowers hanging all over their ceiling. And this is my very, very poor <laughs> recreation attempt at that, but you know what? It brings me joy. I like it enough. So uh, this is just two command hooks on the ceiling with some twine and then hanging down are the flowers. So this is all the gum and I have so far. So I have uh, five bunches, probably about 10 to 15 in each. So that's what I've gotten so far. Um, hydrangeas, a few zinnias. I don't really like how the zinnias dry that much. I mean, they're okay, but not my favorite. Uh, the hydrangeas over here, and then this is also where I have my herbs. Uh, this rack I've had for a while, and the reason I'm using it to dry herbs is because of the way the racks are set up. There's a lot of airflow, so it's not like a flat piece of wood. There's airflow, so I'm just laying the herbs on the rack. I don't have a dehydrator. I have tried drying herbs in the oven with success at our last place, but this place, I don't think the oven gets low enough and every time i've tried it here they've burned so i just leave them on the rack for a few weeks and then once they feel crispy i'll take them down and i'll show you what i do with those later in the video but for now let's go ahead and get the most recent little batch of gomfrina tied up all right so what i've basically been doing is taking this twine which i think has lasted me three years now so i've gotten a lot of use out of it um, and then i'm putting it underneath all of the stems of the gomfrina. I'm gonna tie it once and leave this little piece sticking out. Give it another tie just to knot it at the base here. Then, just to make sure it's more steady and I have a bit more support, I'm just gonna wrap the twine around the base of the stems. And of course there's one stem that's extra long that's making this a bit more difficult. Um, but the reason that I leave this a little bit longer is because once I wrapped it around enough, I'll go ahead and tie it off again with that piece. Doing a little knot here. So here's this latest batch of gomfrina. I'm just gonna hang these on the rack and pretty much any other flowers that I dry, I'm gonna leave them, leave them on this rack as well. Again, this at least looks pretty-ish to me, but it is a little delicate and it's fallen a couple times, so I don't wanna add anything else to it. So I'm just gonna leave that as is and then anything else additional to dry, like I said, will be on this rack. So I've decided for today the only herbs I'm going to harvest are my tricolor sage that I have here, uh, the chocolate mint, and then, oh my gosh, I'm blanking, oh, my rosemary over here. Um, the other ones can wait a little bit longer before I'm going to harvest them, and also the pollinators are just loving the oregano, so I feel too bad to take it away from them. Here's what I harvested from the herbs. So the first thing I do is a pest check, just kind of flipping over the leaves and making sure there's no eggs or bugs on them. I just had a very unhappy spider crawl out of the sage and off the table. Um, so I apologize to him for ruining his habitat. But the other thing I look for are any yellowing or kind of diseased looking leaves. This branch of the chocolate mint, actually, I'm not gonna use at all because not only do the leaves yellow, but there's a few that have like bug holes in them. So I'm just gonna leave that over there um, but going through the rest of these and anything like for example this leaf on the bottom I'll probably remove uh, most of the yellow leaves I feel like have fallen off but here's a few more at the bottom of there that I'll remove as well and just save the healthier looking leaves we're in the bathroom now hello um, because I am going to rinse off the herbs so I do this with herbs because 
obviously I'm going to eat the herbs. I'm not eating the dried flowers, so I don't necessarily feel like I need to rinse them off. Um, but I do try to be gentle with the herbs because, well, especially with basil, um, I don't want to bruise the leaves. So what I'll tend to do is just swish them around in some water, shake them off, and then lay them on some paper towel to dry overnight. I just wanted to show you that there's actually a colander that comes with this bowl. So for the herbs that are a bit smaller that I don't just, you know, dip one individually, I can swish them around here in the water. And then when I'm done, I don't know if I can do this with one hand, let's see, yep. I can just take it out and gently shake them off like that. I think I just found this on Amazon, but I'm sure they have them at a lot of different places, but I have found it really useful to have both the bowl and the colander. Now, once the herbs in the bathroom are done drying, so sometime tomorrow, I will take them out of the bathroom and set them on this rack to dry, which means that I need to empty out this rack where I think the majority of the herbs have been here three weeks maybe. Um, so they are ready to go down to the kitchen to be ground up and stored. So let's go ahead and empty off these shelves. All right, the rack is empty except for the flowers, ready for more herbs, and then the dried ones are now in this basket. So let's go take these downstairs and I'll show you the next step. We're downstairs now and basically what I've done is I've gone ahead and removed the leaves from the stems. So we have sage here. That is the oregano, rosemary, and then chocolate mint. Then over here I have my containers. So I already had oregano and rosemary. I think some of this is even from last year and then rounds of dried herbs that I've already done from this year. And then I have two empty containers for the mint and the sage. Um, so what I'm going to do is use a small little blender, chop up these into even smaller pieces, and then we'll get them in the jars here. So here we are. These are the herbs that I've just gone ahead and chopped up a little bit finer. You can see the rosemary is basically completely full. The sage is almost full. Um, oregano, almost full. And then about halfway for the mint. So I'll still be filling these up until they're completely full. Anything I harvest after that, I'll probably just keep in a Ziploc baggie. And then I'll be able to use these throughout the entire year. So that's everything for today. I decided I'm going to dry the hydrangeas later on, so I'll put that in another video. But thank you so much for following along with me today, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.